Hello, this is Quantum Overlord. As you notice, I've got um, a different introduction slide, and this is because I lost all my PC files and everything to do with my YouTube channel, which is why I've had to start afresh, and also why I haven't made any videos recently. This will be a new video that I'm making um, from a subscriber request, someone called Agnostica. Um, I'll put an annotation up here so you can see his channel. So this is his subscriber request. I apologise for not making any videos recently, so I'm going to start the video now. This is a brief introduction about how you might go about measuring distances in space. And I'm going to start with a couple of mathematical definitions, and then I'm going to generate a few equations and use, a, use some knowledge of standard candles to see how we might go about doing this. So let's start with a definition. A star of magnitude 1 is defined as being the fifth root of 100 times brighter than a star of magnitude 2. Um, historically, this is this is a historical definition, and it came from the fact that a star of magnitude five was a hundred times dimmer than a star of magnitude zero. So the lower the magnitude, the brighter the star. So how are these how are magnitudes and brightnesses related? Okay, so I've defined these intensities here. What I've done is I've put this number, which is I'll call two point five. It's the fifth root of a hundred, but it's about two point five. Two point five to the power of the difference between the magnitudes, which might be 1, in which case the first star is 2.5 times brighter than the second star. But you can see that that the that 2.5 to the power of the difference of the magnitude is how much brighter the first star is than the second star. So you can see that the lower the magnitude, the brighter the star is, and that fits in with this definition fine. So that's where this definition comes from. You can see if the difference is 2, then you get 2.5 squared. So the first star is 2.5 squared times brighter than the second star. Okay, let's move on. And, okay, I've taken logs of both sides. I've taken log base root 100, um, fifth root of 100, which isn't great. It's a bit clumsy, but I can alter this later using some log laws. The log law that I'm going to use is this one, which is changing the base. So log base x of y equals log of y over log of x. And the base on this side doesn't matter. I put it as base 10 because I want my equation to be in base 10, because that that's the base that we commonly use for this sort of thing. Um, it could be in any base there. Okay, with that in mind, um, okay, we can see that y is i1 over i2, so that goes there, and we can see that x is the base, which is the fifth root of 100, so that goes there. So m1 minus m2 is log i1 over i2 over log of that number. Okay, so we can simplify the denominator by saying, okay, the fifth root of 100 is 100 to the power of 1 fifth. And we know that 100 is 10 squared, so we can write this number as 10 to the power 2 fifths. So we can take the two fifths out and write it as a coefficient on this side because that's that's just a simple log rule. If you've got a log of something to the power of something, you can take the power bit out and put it as a coefficient. That's another log rule, and we end up with log ten of ten, which of course is just one. So we've got a, we're dividing by two over five. So I'm going to put that on the numerator by inversing it. So we end up with a five over two. So in summary m2 minus m1 equals 5 over 2 log 10 of i1 over i2. Okay, so we need to express the, our, the distance to our star in terms of our intensity. So we're going to say that intensity is proportional to 1 over the distance squared. And we can imagine that like a sphere. As, a, as we have a light source, we can imagine a sphere around it growing, and the light can be instant on, say, our telescope. And we can see that it's r squared because we're looking at an area that's being instant on something. So as a sphere grows, we're looking at the surface area of a particular section of the um, shell of the sphere being instant on our telescope. So we can see that as the sphere gets bigger and bigger, less of the entire area of the sphere is instant on our telescope. So we can see that the, that the intensity decreases purport, um, proportional to the square of the distance. Okay, so, so that, that's that's intuitive. So let's write it as an equality. We can see that i is k over r squared. That's just rewriting as an equality. So I'm going to take my i1 over i2 and write it in this way. We can describe i1 
as right, um, we can write I1 as k over R1 squared, k over R1 squared, and I2 as k over R2 squared, and since it's on the bottom, that's R2 squared over k. k is cancelled out, and we end up with R2 squared over R1 squared. Okay, now let's take this and put it into our original equation. So now we've got m2 minus m1 is 5 over 2, log 10, r2 squared over r1 squared from that. Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken the r2 over r1 squared and taken the power out and made it a coefficient, and then the 2's cancel. So that's just the basic quotient log rule that I used before. Okay, so now comes the important part. We can define this um, apparent magnitude, m1, as an absolute magnitude. That is, we can define m1 as the apparent magnitude of any entity that we're interested in, um, observed from a distance of 10 parsecs. And parsecs is just a particular unit of measurement, distance. Um, I'll perhaps explain how parsecs are defined in another video. So, we can rewrite this equation um, using absolute magnitude. So, big M is how bright a star appears, provided it's viewed from 10 parsecs away. Okay. And now we can look at m2 equals m. So the little m is, is our, as our normal apparent magnitude. So we're looking at the star that we're interested in, or entity that we're interested in, and how bright it appears. Okay, so now substituting it into our original equation, little m minus big M equals 5 log 10, little r over big R. Um, little r is the distance from our entity that we're looking at, that we're interested in, and big R is obviously our definition, which is 10 parsecs, because we can see that that's um, that M1 is R1, so big M is big R. So our big R is 10 parsecs. Now, provided we measure the distance in parsecs, we can let big R equal 10. So that's what I've done here. We're, so we're using another um, log rule where we expand the log into a difference. So 5 log 10 r over big R becomes 5 log 10 r minus 5 log big R. And, and log, of, to the log 10 of big R is just 1 because log 10 of 10 is 1, big R is 10 parsecs. And of course... We're multiplying that by 5, so that's where the minus 5 comes from. Okay, so now we have all our, th um, all our quantities def well defined. Let's rearrange and make R the, the subject of the formula. So add 5 to both sides, yeah. divide by 5, and then take everything to the power 10. So we've got our distance now. So I'll just make, make it clear what these quantities are. M is the apparent magnitude of the entity that we're interested in. How it appears from our point of observation. Big M is our absolute magnitude. How the object would appear if we were to view it from 10 parsecs away. Right, so given all this, how do we work out how far away a star is? Well, it isn't actually that simple because we still don't know what Big M is. We still don't know how that star would look if it were 10 parsecs away. If we did, we wouldn't have a problem in the first place. So this is where standard candles come in. A standard candle is an object in space where the absolute magnitude of that object is predictable or constant. And I'll discuss a couple. Well, um, one particular standard candle is a Type 1a supernova. A Type 1a supernova will have a peak absolute magnitude of about negative 19. And given that all type 1a supernovas have a peak magnitude of negative 19, which is deduced from theoretical calculations, and I don't really understand how, how this is indeed calculated, so that's beyond, that's beyond my knowledge. But given that we know that the absolute magnitude of these particular types of supernova is a constant, the only unknown is the is, it then becomes a distance because we know what our apparent magnitude is because we can see our supernova from our observation point which might be on Earth. We know that big M is negative 19 in the, in the case of, a, of, of this type 1a supernova um, of course at its peak magnitude because the magnitude of supernovas change so this is its peak and then we can work out how far away that particular supernova is.
that is one way of measuring distances in space. We can look in the sky, and if we see a supernova, we can look at look at how bright that supernova is, if it's a type 1a supernova, and then we can say, well, how bright should it be if it's 10 parsecs away, and then we can use that to work, work out how far away we are from that supernova. And supernovas aren't the only type of standard candle. There are other types of standard candle. For example, the 10th brightest star in a galaxy is also a standard candle. And of course, this isn't the only way of measuring distances in space, but it's one particular method that's worth thinking about.